This is not a Formula One video. Okay, a little bit. Okay, a lot. But I swear that I'm going to show you the process of drawing and painting. Those who know me know that I am a Formula One fan. I want to give you some context because the events of the Formula One Grand Prix of San Marino, everyone who knows even a little bit of Formula One have ever heard about someone called Ayrton Senna. When I was a kid, I couldn't even pronounce his name, but I do remember hearing his name constantly in the news every time they talk about Formula One, saying that he won the race or he was in the podium. I remember seeing rivers of people following his body the day of his funeral. But this story goes far beyond Ayrton Senna, because this was one of the darkest weekends in the Formula One history. This year, we commemorate 30 years since the passing away of one of the greatest stars of Formula One. If you don't know a lot about the category, possibly you have heard about some Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna Silva was a Brazilian driver born in Sao Paulo in 1960. Three times champion of Formula One and a legend in the sport. At such degree that many of the drivers in the current Formula One grid recognize him as one of their inspirations to start in the world of motorsports. In the 1994 season, he was in the quest for his fourth championship when this happened. Nobody knows why Ayrton Senna's luck ended. Feliz 90, Feliz 91, Feliz 92, Feliz 93. Mas a gente volta. Feliz Natal! Okay. Well, no, no, no. It was not Shusha's fault. Now that I took that out, let's continue. As I told you before, this is something that shouldn't have happened. That weekend, something that was lurking on the Emilia Romagna region in Italy, or maybe just over the racetrack. But death was thirsty and was looking for victims. We had warnings from the very Friday, when in the Variante Baza, Ruiz Barrichello had a very big crash, and even the driver confirms he was dead during six minutes. This accident should have been a warning, but it gave them a false hope. They thought the cars were safe enough that if they have a huge accident, nothing was going to happen. A little bit extra context. In the beginning of the 90s, Formula 1 cars were becoming faster and faster, and they had a big deal of driving aids, which made them a lot easier to drive. In the 1993 season, Williams' Formula 1 team had the biggest advancements in technology. But in the 1994 season, all these driving aids were removed from the cars. However, cars and racetracks were the same. This weekend was full of protest, especially about security. Ayrton Senna was one of the drivers who put more emphasis in this field. With the certainty that all the cars were safe, we arrived to the qualification on Saturday, April 30th, 1994. And in here we have the second main character of our story and an illustration. Roland Ratzenberger was an Austrian driver born in Salzburg on the 4th of July, 1960. He was in his debut year in Formula 1 with the same tech team. He finished one of the two previous races and in the qualification of the third race, this happened. The footage is very strong. Roland Rottenberger died upon the impact. He crashed the wall at more than 300 km per hour in an impact that generated around 500 Gs, one of the biggest crashes in Formula 1 history, that broke his aorta and the base of his skull. With two accidents, one of them deadly, the weekend was already a tragedy, especially because it was the first death in Formula 1 in 12 years. I'm going to do the Simtek car 1994 with the number 32. That was the number that Ronald Rottenberger used during the 1994 campaign. I will also draw his helmet that displayed the Austrian flag. The proportions in Ronald Rottenberger's face are a little bit deceiving because in the previous study, I could notice that the mid part in his face, eyes and nose, is smaller than the other two parts, making his forehead and chin look bigger than normal. Despite the tragedy that represented the death of Ronald Rottenberger, on Saturday, everything was eclipsed on Sunday during the race. As the main picture, I'm going to draw Senna in his McLaren red suit, where he had his golden years. I will also draw him raising the most special trophy in his whole career, the trophy of his home race that he won in 1991. I'm going to paint his McLaren MP4 with the number 12 in his favorite element, rain. And lastly, I will draw the Williams W16 with the number 2, with those iconic white and blue colors in which Senna lost his life. And of course the iconic yellow and green helmet. His face has a very normal proportion, although his face traits, especially his eyes and nose, have very strong lines, very masculine, that along with his hair in all directions are his main features. If you want to see more of the painting process and you're not so interested in the history of this day, go to the minute that you see in the screen. 
Sunday started as a normal day with the party that Formula One is. Parades, music, almost trying to deny what was going on. The race started with Ayrton Senna in pole position, ready to score the first points in the season. Everything looked normal at the beginning, but a new warning. A big crash in the back part between Pedro Lamy and Leto made everything stop. The drivers hurt, but fine, could walk away from their cars. But it was not everything that happened. They breathed from the cars, including a heavy wheel, flew toward the main stand, leaving eight spectators hurt. Another warning. Despite all warnings, human ambition is powerful, and ignoring everything, the race kept going. Cars followed the slow safety car for around six laps, making their tires too cold. Because of this, when the race was restarted in lap six, the drivers were struggling against their cars. In lap seven, in the fast Tamburello corner, and at 211 km per hour, his car rocketed against a concrete wall without any protection to stop his crash. The world was silent. This illustration is a tribute to the tragic events of that weekend and to two men who shouldn't have left this world. I want this illustration to have different components. Being the first one, texture. I'm going to use different brushes with a lot of texture, including some of my new dual brushes. I am also going to use some different Procreate tools to cause some chaos in the painting. I'm going to use them as tools to create some unpredictability. I also want to include color as much as possible without breaking the solemn air of this illustration, to break the monotony of big areas with just one color. I make this illustration for me, because I want to have it in my collection, but also for all the fans who want to honor these two drivers and the tragedy of that weekend. Or maybe just to remember Ayrton Senna, which is possibly most of the people. I give every element its main color. I color around the lines and then I fill in the spaces. For this I use the main color of every element, either for the cars, for the helmets and for the drivers. When I have all the silhouettes, I'm going to block the layer and I'm going to give every element of the picture its specific color, like the skin color for the drivers the black color in the carbon fiber or in the tires and even every paint color in the cars or in the helmets as well as the driver numbers and the sponsors many many sponsors i spent lots and lots of time working on logos stickers brands it was lots of hours in this process to bring authenticity to the illustration this was the single longest process in the whole illustration all these logos and brands required a lot of precision to make all the brands look correct to have the correct letter sizes the right perspective and to have just the necessary quantity of detail just to bring the necessary authenticity to the piece with all these elements in place, we're going to start with the rendering process. Rendering is basically the process through which we're going to get three-dimensionality by using light and dark spots. The rendering process I follow is possibly not the most usual. I start by darkening the picture. In this case, I will use bright colors, mostly purples, magentas, blues, aquamarine, greens. No, not gray. I do this process in a new layer that I turn into a clipping mask and set to multiply. I lower the opacity and then soften the texture just a bit. And for the cards, I'm going to use a splatter brush with a lot of texture. With all these dark spots in place, the only thing I have to do is to erase to reveal the lightest colors underneath. With this, I make sure that there is a lot of color, especially in the shadow areas. I follow the same process with the other two cards. With this, I get the first shading in these cards. But of course, later I will come back to create some highlights and some dark shadows. 
Now you can proceed to work on the smallest Senna with the trophy. Being a small part in the picture, just as the cars, they require less detail. But of course, not to the point to leave it flat. I can't ignore any part of the picture. Also for this part, I'm going to use very saturated colors, and then I'm going to erase to define the initial lights. Of course, later it's necessary to add darker shadows and brighter lights to include more details despite the size. Now it's time to color the main character, Senna and Rosenberger. Each one, of, each one of them is in their own layer, with their own lines layer. Just as I did with the other elements in the picture, for the shading, I create a new layer that is set to multiply and I use it as a clipping mask. In this case, I'm going to use my squares brush, which is an original brush, and that is possibly an unusual brush to use in this stage. Normally we would like something softer and easier to manage, but I like the fact that I can create texture and multiple color spots. Similar to the other elements, I'm going to use bright colors, many colors from the lower part of the color wheel. With this, I add a lot of variety to the shadow colors, even in the skin colors. Colors that only with skin colors you wouldn't get. Remember, coloring skin is more than using skin colors. I soften all textures, avoiding smearing them completely. In the final illustration, I want these colors and textures to show in between those colors that we would call the right ones. I lower the opacity and I start to highlight areas with soft light, keeping the frontal part of the face with a very soft contrast, keeping the most contrast in some very specific areas, like in the inner corner of the eyes or under the nose. The sides and the lower part of the face are going to be naturally darker. I add some highlights to accent some specific areas. I shall do it very softly so it doesn't look like an old leather. Wrinkles, pores, moles, facial hair, shaving cuts, etc. All these add imperfections. And imperfections are equal to naturality. I also add red to some specific areas. Eyelids, nose, cheeks, ears, lips and I add a slightly darker shadow under the jaw. With the eraser tool, I lighten some areas in the suit, and using a purplish color, I create darker areas. It's time to work on Senna. For Senna, I will follow a very similar process that I followed with Rosenberger. I'm going to focus on his eyes, eyebrows, mouth, and hair, as well as the outline of his face, which are his most prominent facial features. Again, using the eraser tool, I'm going to create the volumes of the face, making sure that they are very soft. I add lights in overlay to define the contour in the left side, very softly. I use elongated texture brushes to define the hair texture. Up to this point, I want to show that the illustration is mostly finished. I want to add more saturated colors and texture in some areas, and mess things up a little bit. Add some details in different areas of the illustration, looking for some balance between detail and simplicity between an innovative illustration, but with some air of the past. I still need to work on the background to complement better the concept of the whole illustration. After Senna's accident, perhaps everybody knew it had been a serious thing. Nobody was certain about how bad the situation was. Possibly everybody hoped he was going to get better. So the race kept going, hoping for all the tragedies to be over but they weren't. In lap 48, Michel Alboreto got into pits. In his way out, a loose wheel hurt four mechanics. All of this seems something invented for a movie. It seems impossible, so much pain can happen in the same event. But this is real, it's madness, it's a tragedy, but it's real. Ayrton Senna was going for this victory. This was going to be his first victory of the season and his first victory with Williams. 
And besides, this victory had a very special meaning for him. When Senna's body was removed from his car, they found the Austrian flag, with which Senna was going to dedicate his victory to Ronald Ratzenberger, joining forever the history of these two men. The rookie and the champion, the legend, Ayrton Senna and Roland Ratzenberger. This was a very ambitious illustration and video. I knew about the time for making both of them, but I decided to make it with a lot of love and respect. Thank you for getting to this point and to follow me in this illustration process, as well as for reviving history with me, even though I'm not a really good storyteller. If you're an F1, motorsport or Senna fan, or if you like the kind of art that I do, now you can acquire this beautiful art piece. This commemorative poster for collectors is a special limited edition of 30 posters signed and numbered. And to limit the quantity, they will not be reprinted. You can go to my Instagram to ask for your poster. DM me and I will write back so you can order your copy. This way, you can remember these two drivers and this date. Your opinion is very important. So please tell me in the comments what you think about this art piece and about this kind of content. And now that you're there, like this video, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, share it with somebody who can find this content useful. See you in the next video. Adios.